Hey everyone, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and this is part 3 of the Megabit Mini Nest Pi case that has the NFC cartridges. And in this video, we're going to be covering the software. So I've took some extra time to try to make this easier for everyone, and what I've done is I've built a custom RetroPie image that already has all the software for the NFC pre-installed. So after installing the image, the only thing you have to do is add your own ROMs. And another thing I took time to do was make a custom theme. This theme was originally a Super Nintendo theme made by Ruckage, but I converted it to a Nintendo theme. Also in this video, if you want to use your own RetroPy image, I'll show you how to do it that way too. So the first thing you want to do is go to this mega link and download it, and the link will be down in the description. So the download is going to include a RetroPy image that has an NFC software already pre-programmed on it, plus it's going to have instructions if you want to use your own RetroPy image. So the download is just under one gigabyte, so it might take maybe half hour, it just depends on your computer speed. For me it took about 20 minutes to download. Once downloaded, I'm going to select the Show in Folder option. Now I'm going to minimize my internet screen. Now I'm going to drag this to my desktop. So the download is going to be a zip file, so now I'm going to open up the zip file, and inside there is another folder, and I'm going to extract that to the desktop also. And the folder that's being extracted should end up being about 2.69 gigabytes. And this originally was an 8 gigabyte RetroPie image, but I shrunk it down to 2.69 so it was easier to download. So inside the folder, there's the Megabit Nest Pi image that has that software pre installed on it and it's ready to go. And then there's also some instructions if you want to use your own RetroPie image. And the instructions consist of five different commands that will make your RetroPie image NFC compatible. Also included inside here is the passwords for Pi Control, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the tutorial. Now we need to download a program called WinDisk32 Manager. And I'll make sure to provide a link down below in the description as well. Once it's downloaded, we want to show in folder again. And I'm going to minimize my internet screen. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this to my desktop. Now this is a program that we use to write the images to the SD cards. So without this program, you can't write your images to your card. So I'm going to double click on the Win32 disk icon and that's going to install the program for me. So I'm going to go ahead and accept everything and go ahead and create desktop shortcut and click install. Now I'm just going to leave these checked. It's going to show some instructions and it's going to launch the WinDisk32 application. So here's the instructions. If you want to read those you can. I'm just going to close mine out. And this is the program we use to write the images to the SD card. Now we're done with the install program, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. All we need to do is keep the application that we just installed now. Now I'm going to double click on the application that was just installed. And select for an image file, I'm going to select the image file that we downloaded earlier. So I'm going to navigate to where it's at. So it's in this megabit nest image folder right here. And there's the image. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now for a device, you need a micro SD card formatted to FAT32. And I'd recommend having at least an 8 gigabyte card. That way you have plenty of room for game saves and more games. So I'm going to plug my memory card into the computer and format it now. So I've located it right here. And I'm going to right click and select format. Use FAT32. And I'm going to name it Megabit. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to name my Megabit so I don't get my cards mixed up. And I'm just doing the quick format. If you do the regular format, it takes forever. And I don't got time for that. So, all right, format's complete. Now I can just close out the window. Now I'm back to the WinDisk32 application, and I need to select my device, and that's going to be the drive I just formatted. And make sure that you have the correct drive. So I have the proper drive selected, so I'm going to select right by clicking on it then select yes. Now this could take up to a half hour to write the image, it just depends how big the image is. It could take a little while. But I fast forward it so we don't have to sit through the whole thing. Alright, write successful. That's a good sign. We're going to click OK. After writing the image, you might get a prompt from Windows saying you need to format the drive. You can just ignore that. It just doesn't recognize it because it's an image on the SD card instead of a regular file system. Now it's time to remove our SD card and install it into the Raspberry Pi 3. For a controller, I'm going to use a Nintendo USB controller. There's a lot of different controllers out there. That's just what I'm using for this one. 
And I recommend you have a keyboard. There's a lot of places you can't really navigate through without having a keyboard. This is just a cheap $2 keyboard that's USB powered that I picked up at a thrift store for only like two bucks. So before powering it on, I wanna go ahead and plug in my controller and the keyboard. And to power this console, I have a USB 5 volt 2.1 adapter. And you want at least 2.1 amps, but 2.5 is preferred. And before plugging in the power, you wanna make sure your power switch is in the on position. Otherwise, it's gonna power up, then back off if the switch is in the off position. And if you're using your own RetroPie image, it'll be the same thing. Make sure that switch is in the on position. So when the image boots up, you're gonna have a custom splash screen, and it's gonna have that Mario Brothers 2 music playing in the background. Now upon first boot, it's gonna ask you to program a controller. You should get a message like this. So just hold a button on your controller, and it'll recognize it so you can configure it. So to configure the controller, you just follow the prompts. So for D-pad up, press up, down, down, left, right, etc. So it's going to have a bunch of buttons that you're probably not going to have, especially for a Nintendo controller. So for the buttons you don't have, like X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, etc., you just hold the start button and it'll skip that button and call it not defined. And for the hotkey, I'm going to use my select button. And what the hotkey does is if you're in the middle of a game, you can push start and select and that'll bring you back to the home menu. And there's a couple other uses it has too. So here's a look at the main menu for this RetroPie image. But if you're using your own RetroPie image, we need to make a couple of changes before we continue. And this step is only if you're going to use your own RetroPie image. If you're using the image I've supplied, you do not do this step. So first thing you want to do if you're using your own RetroPie image is get logged into Wi-Fi. Usually it's going to be inside the RetroPie folder and there's going to be a Wi-Fi option that you can select. So you're going to select that, it's going to give you an option to connect to Wi-Fi and search for devices. Find your device, connect to it, and your password. After you're done, select OK, and you're going to need your keyboard probably to navigate through this menu. After selecting your network and OK, it should bring you back to the main menu. Once we're back at the main menu or the home screen, we're going to push the Start button and navigate down to Quit. Now we're going to go down to Quit Emulation Station and select Yes. Now this is going to take you to a command prompt for the RetroPie. And this is where we're going to enter the commands to program the NFC software. So included in that mega link that we downloaded earlier is all the commands we need to enter. And we need to enter these five commands one at a time. And don't be discouraged by this step. It doesn't take that long, maybe five or eight minutes. It's not a big deal. So here's the first command we're going to enter. And after it's typed out, go ahead and press the Enter key. All right, now it's time for our second command. Now we're gonna press enter again. Now we're on the third command. Enter. Now we're gonna change directory. And press enter again. And our last command. And press enter. It's going to say yes or no. You want to say yes. Enter. Once it's done, you want to select yes, and it's going to reboot the system. And once it reboots, we're going to have all that NFC software installed, and we'll end up back at the main menu. And if you're using my RetroPie image, this is what your main menu is going to look like, but if you're using your own RetroPie image, you're probably going to have a different theme. Okay, from this point on, whether you're using my RetroPie image or your own RetroPie image, you can follow this tutorial. So we're just about ready to add some games, but what we're going to do first is expand the file system on our memory card. That way we can use the full capacity of our card. So we're going to open up the RetroPie folder, then go down to Raspberry Config and select that. And you're probably going to need your keyboard for this step. You're going to have to use your arrow keys and the enter key. So I'm going to go down to Advanced Options and select that. And then Expand File System. Push Enter here. And what this is going to do is allow me to use all available memory that's on my SD card. You'll get a prompt saying File System has been resized. Changes won't be made until it's reboot. So we're going to exit out of here. And when we exit out, it's going to give us an option to reboot. We're going to select Yes. So now it's going to reboot RetroPie. And we're back at the main menu. 
Now it's time to add some games. So to load games, I'm going to use a USB flash drive. This is just a cheap SanDisk flash drive, and preferably you want to use one that has a light on it. That way you can tell when it's done right in files. So I'm going to plug the flash drive into my computer, and here it is right here. Now I'm going to format it to FAT32, and I'm going to name it RetroPie. Again, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine RetroPie. Once it's formatted, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to create a folder called RetroPie all lowercase. After creating the folder, I'm going to unplug the flash drive and plug that into my Nintendo. So now what's going to happen is there's going to be a file structure that's going to be built inside that RetroPie folder we just made. So if your flash drive has a light like mine, it's going to blink really fast while it's writing the files, and it could take up to 10 minutes. So it'll blink fast, and then when it's done writing the files, it'll start blinking real slow. Once it starts to blink slowly, we can go ahead and remove the flash drive, now it's time to go ahead and plug it back into the computer. Now if everything went right when we click on the RetroPie folder, we should have a file structure inside there. And we do, we have a BIOS, configs, and a ROMs folder. And in your ROMs folder, that's where you put your games. So whatever system you're trying to add games to, you're going to put it inside that folder. So I'm looking for Nintendo, and that's going to be labeled NES. So I'm going to click on that folder, and that's where my Nintendo ROMs are going to go. So I have some ROMs available on my computer, and I can't provide any ROMs, you're going to have to find those on your own. You can just use Google, that's your friend. There's a lot of sites where you can find Nintendo ROMs these days. So I have three different games here. I got Mario Brothers 1, 2, and 3. And these games are in a zip file, and inside that zip file is an NES file. So here's a look at the file. If you open it, what it looks like. So it contains the NES file inside of it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these zip files and drag them over to the ROMs folder for the NES. So at this point you can add as many games as you want. You can add the whole collection of Nintendo games, but I'm just doing three games right now just for an example. Now it's time to unplug the flash drive and plug it back into the Nintendo. And depending how many games you're adding, it could take a while. But since I'm only adding three games, this is going to be pretty quick. So I'm just going to wait for that light to get done flashing fast and start blinking slowly. And then I'll know the games have been added to the console. Once the light starts blinking slowly, I'm going to push the start button, navigate down to quit, and then restart emulation station. And if everything went right, I'm going to have some games when it reloads. Alright, we have success. We have the Nintendo folder now, and inside there we should have the three games we just added. So we got Super Mario Bros. 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to load Super Mario Bros. 3. And now it's time to write to one of our cartridges. So I have a Super Mario Bros. 3 cartridge here. It's got the NFC tag inside of it. I'm going to go ahead and put that in a console. And then hold the reset button for about three seconds. Then the light's going to start blinking three times, and that's going to indicate that it just wrote to the cartridge. So now Super Mario Bros. 3 should be programmed on that cartridge. So when I push reset, it's going to load Super Mario Bros. 3. Alright, so I'm done with Super Mario Bros. 3, but I got more cartridges I want to program. So what I'm going to do is push select and start at the same time and go back to the home screen. Alright, so now I'm going to load a different game. I'm going to load Super Mario Bros. 1. Now I'm going to load my Super Mario Bros. cartridge. Now hold the reset button for three seconds. Let that light blink three times. Now I've wrote to two NFC cartridges, so the process is pretty simple. So the power button does just what it's supposed to. It turns the console on and turns the console off. And when you push the reset button, it loads whatever game's inside the slot, or if there's no game inserted, it'll load the last game you played. And if you turn the console on with the cartridge inside of it, it'll load that game automatically, or if you turn the console on without a cartridge, it'll load to the main menu. And something I should mention is you're not limited to games that are just on cartridges. If you have the full set of Nintendo games, what I usually do is just put my favorite games on the cartridges, and then everything else I just select through Emulation Station. And if you have an NFC compatible phone, you can use your phone to write to the cartridges also. So I have a program called NFC Tools, and I'm going to grab a cartridge that's already programmed just to show you the format. So it has two records. The first record is the system name, NES, and then the second record is the exact file name of the game. So now I'm going to write to a cartridge, and I have a Batman cartridge here. 
So I'm going to add a record, and the first one is going to be a text record. We're going to name it NES. Select OK. Now I'm going to add another record. This will be text also, and this will be the exact file name of the game. I'm going to select OK. And here's a look at the two records. Now I'm going to select right and then scan the Batman cartridge. And if everything goes like it's supposed to, it's going to write those two text records to the cartridge. So now I'm going to scan the cartridge I just wrote to, and we'll see what it says. Alright, looks like it programmed the cartridge, just like it's supposed to. Included with your NFC software is a program called Pi Control, and it's worth checking out. It's pretty cool. So first you want to do is make sure you're logged into Wi-Fi. If you haven't already done that, make sure you're logged into Wi-Fi. After that, you're going to go to Show IP Address. Now we're going to write down your IP address that's located at the top there. That's going to be that 192 number. After writing down the IP number, we can go ahead and exit out and get back to your main menu. Now I'm going to move over to my computer and open up my internet browser. And on the top of my internet browser there, I'm going to enter that IP address that I just wrote down. Now I'm going to enter, and that's going to open up a Pi Control page. So username is Pi Control, one word, lowercase, password is password, all lowercase. So this gives us access to some pretty cool stuff. We can see the CPU usage, the temperature. We can also read, write, and clear NFC tags. So right now it's reading the game that's inside my console. I have Super Mario Bros. 2 inside there. There's also access to your fan settings and your on and off buttons. But I'd recommend don't mess with these settings unless you're an advanced user. You can even add games that are located on your computer. So I'm going to go to the Games tab and select the plus button and then choose files. So I have some files that are located on my desktop. I'm going to select those. Now I'm going to upload them. After uploading, these two games are now going to be available on my Megabit Nintendo console. So I'm going to reload Emulation Station and I should have five games now. So that's another way you can add games and it actually works pretty easy. Now I'm going to write to a cartridge using Pi Control, so I've loaded Double Dragon into my Nintendo console, and I'm going to push the right button, and now when I push reset on my console, it should load Double Dragon. So that's three different ways you can write to your NFC cartridges. And if you want to download your own box art for games, you can do that too. There's a built-in scraper and emulation station that will download box art plus information for the game. Alright, that concludes the software video. If you're interested in these products and you'd like to purchase some, check out MegabitNES.com. He has a lot of cool stuff on there. He's got a lot of electronics, he's got Pi 3s, Pi cases, Super Nintendo cases, Nintendo cases, PlayStation cases, all kinds of stuff. Alright, thanks for watching. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe.